Hi, I'm Herb Lawrence from CHGO White Sox. And I'm Adam Hoke from CHGO Bears. This is CHGO Tavern Stop, presented to you by Salerno's Pizza. Head on over to the Grand Avenue location and call 312-666-3444 to make your reservation today. And today we're going to be talking about, I know you're kind of tired about the Fields and Caleb thing, but this is not it. We're talking about Justin Fields and Dylan Cease. We're both White Sox fans here. And we saw this offseason where MLB kind of poo-pooed what Chris Getz, the general manager of the White Sox, was asking for for the former uh, second-place Cy Young guy of Dylan Cease. And so he held on to Dylan Cease because he knew that he has an asset that signed up for two more years after this and has a chance to sign him or to trade him eventually if he needs to. That's the parallel I want to give Hogue. Justin Fields, we all know that more than likely he's gone. He's going to be on somebody else's team. I know the market and the reports are conflicting right now on whether the the market's there for Justin, if it's not, if the Bears have even presented the market. But this is my parallel to the Dylan C situation. Now with Garrett Cole, who was the Yankees ace and the Cy Young Award winner, going through an MRI for his elbow, the Yankees are coming back to the White Sox and asking the White Sox, hey, remember the deal you asked for? Can we do that again type of stuff? That's not necessarily what I think Justin Fields will get, but I think that GM Ryan Poles of the Chicago Bears should hold on to Justin Fields and get the value that he wants from him. I know that bringing back Justin Fields while you're drafting Caleb Williams is going to create a conundrum in the locker room if it comes to that. But I don't think you trade away an asset that is Justin Fields for nothing. Either anything that's below the fourth round, I don't think you even entertain those in that uh, conversation. Because I believe that somebody's going to get hurt. And I think that Justin's value is actually up there in the second round. And if they're not going to get it this year for the draft that's happening at the end of April, maybe next year when he's on his fifth year. And if he plays any time in 2024, which is highly unlikely if Caleb is on the team, I think you get value for Justin Fields. What you? What are your thoughts on where Justin's market's at right now, and the parallels between him and Dylan Cease's market? Yeah, I mean, I see the parallels in the in the idea that you know maybe the market's not where you expected right away, and you're hoping that an injury comes along the way somewhere else. And you do look at the fact that during an NFL season, last few years, and especially this past year, I think we had over sixty starters. It, teams get desperate in the middle of the season. You had Tim Boyle starting at quarterback for the Jets at one point Jeez. this year, um, and injuries are a real part of the game. So there is validity to the idea that if, hypothetically, Justin Fields is only worth a fourth-round pick right now, he could be worth a second-round pick come October uh, or early November before the trade deadline. Um, of course, the problem with that that I do think is very, very different than any White Sox starting pitcher, the quarterback position in mm-hmm. Chicago <laughs> is a completely different dynamic. And the um, pushback or constant attention that you get from the fan base and the media on a daily basis, no matter what time of year it is, it's a completely different animal. The pressure is completely different. And Caleb Williams might be able to handle all that. Mm-hmm. I don't know that that's completely fair, though, to Caleb Williams to put him in that position. And I don't know if it's completely fair to Justin Fields to continue to hold on to him and put him in that position. Now, that doesn't mean that fair is worth the price of uh, a couple rounds of a draft pick, but I just think the situation is different, and I don't know that you'd be doing right by either quarterback to put them in that spot. And I hear you. Yeah, if you have two quarterbacks, you don't have one. And I'm a big proponent of if you draft a quarterback in the first round at all, and then one one like the what like the Bears are going to be doing with Caleb Williams, you hundred percent play that quarterback because that quarterback you have determined is ready for the NFL by drafting him one one. He I don't think you benefit a lot from sitting on the bench, but other players like uh, Ryan Leaf think you benefit from sitting, especially in his case where he was the second round pick or second overall pick to the San Diego Chargers. But I think that. Um, Another parallel, they're both Georgia kids. They're both guys who had very great success early in their careers. And also, I think that like uh, uh, Ryan Poles probably went into a offseason thinking, okay, this is the last number I would accept on Justin Fields. Do you think realistically when rubber hits the road after the April draft, he doesn't hit that number and he's like, 
I guess so. Or before the draft, he knows he's drafting Caleb, and he's like, no one's offering anything higher than a third round pick. I got to just take this. Well, honestly, if you're if you're if you're holding on to him now, but don't want to put them put Caleb and Justin in a situation where they have to coexist, yeah. on the same roster. The only other time I can see between now and the trade deadline where the value for Justin might spike a little bit okay. would be literally during the draft. Would be you have I don't know, a team like, let's just say the Vikings right now, that and that's an interdivisional t- trade, but even ignore that for a second. Just a team like the Vikings or even, um, yeah, let's just go with the Vikings. Mm-hmm. They're, they're trying to draft X quarterback or they are interested in moving up to draft X quarterback and they realize, you know, seven picks in to the draft starting, oh, man, that didn't happen. Yeah, I, I couldn't get that quarterback. Well, now they pivot to Justin. That that's really the only situation. It would have to be one of these teams that is looking to draft a quarterback that does not get that quarterback that would then pivot to Justin. Otherwise, I think you have to wait for injuries to occur in the fall. Yeah, and that's a, that's a very real thing that the Bears have to deal with right now. The White Sox are dealing with with Dylan Cease, but it seems like they're on two different trajectories as the White Sox are a trash team. And the Bears are going up to the top of the NFC, especially because the NFC North is becoming even more trash as we speak. Man, didn't they sign like Sam Darnold as their starting quarterback for the Vikings? What's there's going on there? A, there's a lot of bad, <laughs> weird quarterback signings. This is weird. This is- Justin Fields is way better than half of these guys. <laughs> it's unbelievable. We only got this amount of time. We can't <laughs> g- keep on going on just the fields. But this has been CHEO Tavern Style, presented by Salerno's Pizza. Head on over to the Grand Lo- Avenue location. Call 312-666-3444 to make a reservation today. <laughs>